these calorimetry questions. These four questions are the latest questions that came from each of the three 2018 exams, and then also I grabbed um, the most recent after that, which would have been August 2017, to go over how to use the heat equations, which are on reference table T. So let's take a look. Okay, so in question one, it's asking about the amount of heat in joules, okay, required to increase the temperature of 49.5 gram sample of water from 22 degrees Celsius to 66. So if it's asking about the amount of heat, if I go to the reference tables, reference table T, unless you've been told you have to memorize them, here are the heat equations here at the bottom. Okay, note, Q means heat, M means mass, C specific heat capacity, and delta T is change in temperature. Heat of fusion and heat of vaporization we'll get to in another question. So what we're looking at is Q is equal to M C delta T. Well, how do I know that? Because, of course, we have a change in temperature. So what we're doing here is we are just, as it says in question one, uh, increasing the temperature of water. So not only do I need Q is equal to M C delta T, I also need then the specific heat capacity for water. You notice it's not given in the problem. The reason why it's not given in the problem, it's on the reference table. So if we go back and take a look, here it is. Specific heat capacity for water. That gets the symbol C. So 4.18. So I go back and let's plug it in. We have 49.5 grams, 4.18 joules over grams, degrees Celsius. And my delta T, we're going to use absolute value here. So whether it went up or went down, we're not going to put in a negative sign. We'll leave that off. So it's 66 minus 22. So it's always going to be high to low. That means our delta T is 44 degrees Celsius. So what's left, of course, is to use the calculator. And I have mine here. So let me find it. And what do we have? 49.5 times 4.18 times 44. Now, on the calculator, you're going to get an answer of 9104. I'm just going to round it to the whole number. Joules. Well, I go and I look and I go, uh-oh, I got a problem. The answer is her in scientific notation. Well, it really isn't a problem. All I'm going to do is take this number, and I want to make it a number between, um, I'm sorry, 1 and 10. So I'm going to move the decimal to the left, 1, 2, 3 spaces. So it's going to be 9.1, I'll drop the O and the 4, times 10 to the 3. So I'm converting from standard notation into scientific notation. And of course, my answer then is choice three. So in that question, you need the calorimetry equation, and you need to know, of course, how to do scientific notation. Let's take a look at question two. All right, in question two, this would have been on the what I call the part two, but the um, questions where you're going to go ahead and show your work. Or in this case, you're showing a numer numerical setup, which means, of course, you're going to go ahead and plug into the equation. But remember, we have three equations. We have to figure out what we're doing. So it says, show a numerical setup for calculating the quanti quantity of heat and joules required to completely vaporize 102.3 grams of liquid water at 100 degrees Celsius and 1 atm. Okay, I go back to my Q equations because they're my heat equations and now I'm talking about let me go back for a minute it's talking about vaporize so the one that's gonna fit is this one here Q is equal to MHV heat of vaporization not only do I need that equation but now let's erase this we need heat of vaporization for water which is 2260 joules per gram so let's go back I'm going to put it down here. Q is equal to M H V. And you'll notice there is no delta T. Remember, at phase changes, 
temperature remains constant. So even though they gave us 100, they're trying to trick you. Don't let them trick you. Temperature is remaining constant. So there is no change in temperature. So I'm just going to plug in for a proper setup my mass, 102.3. And I'm going to put the units even though the answer key usually does not say you need the units. And heat of vaporization again is 2260 joules per gram. So that is the setup, and I'm done with question two. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and work on three and four yourself, and come on back and check out how to do those. Okay, let's take a look at question three. Asked what is the amount of heat required to completely melt now? 200 grams of water at STP. So, it's still a Q question. I need to go to my reference table. And now, let me go ahead and get rid of everything we had before. The equation that we're using now is going to be Q is equal to MHF. Now, I don't need to confuse you, but heat of fusion, fusion right now in this unit means melting. Okay? So I also need the heat of fusion for water, 334 joules per gram. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to write the equation down. Q is equal to mHf. And even though it's not required, folks, I would strongly recommend that you do this so you don't make mistakes. 200 grams, and we said it was 334 joules per gram. So it's just 200 times 334. And even I'm going to use a calculator because I don't want to make a careless mistake. And the answer is 66,800 joules, which is here. Okay, for question four, let's take a look at question four. I have a 15.1 gram sample of a metal that's absorbing 48.75 joules of heat. So heat, I'm using Q again. Temperature increases... 25 Kelvin. What is the specific heat capacity of the metal? Okay, so it turns out that delta T, the change in temperature, um, that one for every one degree Celsius change in temperature, that's equal to one Kelvin. So since this is increasing 25 K, that would be increasing 25 degrees Celsius, so we're good. We're looking for specific heat. Remember, that's the letter C. So I'm going to go ahead and use here, let's get rid of this, Q is equal to M C delta T. Now I'm not going to use the specific heat capacity for water here because I'm told it's a metal. So I don't know it, that's what I'm solving for. So Q is equal to M C delta T. I have 48.75 joules of energy. My mass is 15.1 grams. I'm looking for C, and my delta T is 25 Kelvin. So I need to take my 48... 40, oh, hold on, I'm having a problem here. 48... 0.75, I'm going to divide by 15.1, and I'm going to divide by 25, and I get an answer of 0 0.129. It goes a little further, but I'm going to stop there, and here it is, the first choice. So, go over these questions again. This is a great set of four questions, because you're using all three heat equations, and you're using Q's equal to MC delta T in two different ways. Keep working hard and good luck.